Today, we'll be learning how to paint silver surfaces. Then the entirety of the cosmos is accessible to each and every individual mind connected to the great mind. Welcome back collectors, today I'll be painting non metallic metal surfaces on the diorama Triumph of St. Catherine. So if you're ready, let us begin. Alright, welcome back to another tutorial. So today we'll be painting silver non metallic metal surfaces. Um, currently the colours being used are white, ivory from VMC, a uh, few blue from VMC, raw umber from Josonia and black from Chimera. Okay, so with this color right here, it's a mix of 50-50 uh, black and raw umber. I'm gonna start to base coat the entire miniature, or rather the entire surface. Okay, so you just want this to be even and dry before you can move on. So the next color we're gonna use, we're gonna mix in a few blue with raw umber to create this intermediate gray color. Add in a bit of lamin medium. So at this stage, what I'm doing is I'm roughly sketching in the highlight color, uh, the highlight shapes. In in non-metallic metal surfaces, it's always good to remember that because it's glossy, the amount of highlight tends to be a lot larger. So you can be very liberal with this. We want to have large highlight areas, which translates to a large mid tone. And because it's a uh, it's a non-colored, non-metallic metal surface. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna make sure that this mid-tone is gonna be as desaturated as possible. So this is my rough sketch for the colors. And the process is very simple. Just keep gradually adding in few blue to the previous mix. So that we can eventually transition into a full blue mid tone. Alright, you want to make sure that your brush is relatively dry. And you can start to sketch in more detailed shapes. Right now, we're going to start on creating brighter colors, brighter highlights. So I'm going to start to introduce in ivory into the mix. By this time right now, what's very important is that while you want to create a brighter color, you want to make sure that the blue is not as saturated. That's why I added a touch of black into this mix. Another way you can desaturate the color is of course adding more ivory but adding more ivory there will be a too large jump in value 
That's why I added black to to tone it down. So as you guys can see right now, I'm starting to make the highlights a little bit more refined. I'm a little bit more selective with the highlight areas. As you guys can see. And right now, as you guys can see on the top right, on the main face, I'm actually creating a glint. So this glint can stand out independently because it's a, uh, in my opinion, I perceive it as a shine on an entirely separate plane. So it doesn't need to be part of the, the entire gradient that's happening on the bottom left corner. So this glint can also be perceived in painting gems. Uh, if you want to have a detailed look of how I paint gems, the link is on the top right corner and in the show notes below also. Alright, now still pushing the values slightly further, I'm adding in a lot more ivory to the mix. Just to preserve a bit of blue there. Alright. So at this stage you want to be very selective of where you place the highlights and the size of the highlights. Always remember the type of surface that you are painting. So the type of surface we are painting right now is not metallic metal and we want to make sure that the highlight colors take up more of the percentage of the color shown than the mid-tone that's why I'm pushing this slightly further I'm only leaving just a touch of the previous color So a key tip for non-metallic metal painting is that you need your NMM to be consistent. Light placement for non-metallic metal needs to be consistent in order for this to have a convincing effect. So as you guys can see, the focus of this uh, consistency would be the light placement on the bottom left corners where the light catches most of the miniature uh, sorry, most of this surface as well as the consistency in value you want to make sure that um, the values are always coherent and there's not one strange part that's too bright or too colourful relative to the rest I'm really liking the shine on the left side's uh, bend because I think it looks pretty convincing already. As you can see right now, I'm using thinner glazes to start to blend in the blend in the colors so that. At least on the main face, there's not too much of the shadow color. I'm gonna make a strong highlight now with pure ivory. So with this color, I'm gonna be focused on creating each highlighting near the top of the surface and on this glint 
So I want to make sure that this glint stands out from the rest of the other reflections. So I'm pushing in the valley with several layers of this. And then I'm using the darker colors, such as uh, raw umber and black, to clean up the edges. So the other trick for non-metallic metal is that you need to have really really clean edges. So you need to go back and forth and clean the edges. And they need to be super super crisp. So once you've done the crisp note, once you've done to make the surface look crispy, crispy. Yes, then the non-metallic metal surface can look very very convincing. So now it's just a matter of refining and creating the surfaces before we move on to the reflected light. Oh, sorry, missed up one step there. I'm gonna use pure white now. To push the contrast even further. I'm just gonna add some pure white highlights in some areas, especially the glint. So as you guys can see, by adding pure white, it makes the surface look a lot more refined. And now we're going into the shadow color, uh, reflected light. I'm going to use red oxide for this reflected light. I'm using a warm color so that it contrasts against the cool mid-tones. I don't want it to be too warm, that's why I'm adding in a little bit of a uh, few blue to this mix. So the red oxide is from Chimera Colors. So you want to create something like this and you can move on. So while adding in the reflected light colour, I'm also using this to clean up some of the edges to make it a lot more crispy. Crispy. So this crispness helps with the readability of the entire surface and when you make mistakes like what you have on the top right there, uh, you just need to go back to the previous color and clean it up later. Adding more fuel blue into the mix. So these are the reflected lights. So as you guys can see, it's a very back and forth process. When I add in the reflected lights, I just need to make sure that I'm getting all the shapes correct again. Making sure that everything is crispy. Crispy. Like 
And there we have it A shiny NMM surface So just need to take note Have a look at this video and learn some light placements And I hope you found this really useful So as you guys can see here are some of the tips of how to paint silver non-metallic metal First, you gotta make sure that the highlight area is significantly larger than compared to other surfaces and you want to make sure that the highlight area takes up more of the area versus the mid-tone, okay? Secondly, you want to make sure that the edges are crisp. You got to clean it up really nicely with the shadow colors and that will give a convincing non-metallic metal finish. Okay, I hope you guys found this video useful. If you did and you think I deserve it, please subscribe right now. Okay, hit the like button, hit the bell notification icon so that you know when we post the next videos. We are really churning out a lot of content right now. We are producing content every Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, and sometimes Saturdays. Okay, I'm also on the side doing these 90 minute painting challenges so that I get to paint one zombie side character a day. And I hope you guys like what I'm doing. Also, if you really want to support the channel, and if you can afford it, I really appreciate if you head on to our Patreon and the links are in the show notes below, okay? Become a $2 Patreon and you guys get extended play footage for many of my videos. So, extended play footage allows you to scrutinize on every single brushstroke that I make when I paint my miniatures and you guys get to learn how to become a better miniature painter. Become a higher tier painter with exclusive videos so that we guys get to interact and we get to learn from each other and become better painters together. I'd like to thank my Patreons for allowing me to do this and I really enjoy making videos for all you guys. I hope to see you in the next video. See you guys.